Well, this morning, I want to give us a key of the kingdom. I want to talk about something today, I believe, that uh, gives us access in the kingdom and is so foundational and fundamental in the kingdom of God. And uh, I believe we are called to walk in honor. We are called to live from a culture of honor that God has placed in our lives. And I just want to talk about this this morning. We're going to jump in Mark this morning, chapter 6. Mark chapter 6 this morning. Verse 1. Let's stand for the reading of the word this morning. Mark chapter 6, verse 1. If you're there, say, I got the keys to the kingdom. I got the keys to the kingdom. Amen. It says this, Then when he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him, and when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to him, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could not do mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. I'm going to stop there this morning. Father, we, we thank you for your word today, Jesus. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you that uh, as people in your kingdom, we are called to, to walk in honor, to show honor, Father. And I think as we get into your word today, I think for us accessing the kingdom and, and taking the keys. And I thank you for things being released and supernaturally miracles would be released as we grab a hold of these things today, Father. So I thank you, Lord, for your word today. I thank you for your people walking in power as we apply the word to our lives this morning, Jesus. So I just thank you today. We thank you for the word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, as we're talking about, I really want to talk about honor today because I think it's so foundational and fundamental in our walk in the kingdom of God. And, and I want to talk about developing and living in a culture of honor. We talk about culture. It's kind of a word that we throw around a lot nowadays, culture. And culture, what it is, it's really something that you do without thinking about it. You know, we build culture by habit, by, by routines, and it's something we can build intentionally or unintentionally. It's behaviors. It drives our behaviors and the things that we do. You have a culture in your home, whether you realize it or not. And it may not be the same culture in my house. There's things that you do and things that you don't do. You have a culture in your house that may not be the same as mine or, or your neighbors. We have a culture in America. For example, as you leave today, you're going to drive out and you're going to go on the right side lane and the highway. And you do that without thinking because that's the culture in America, we drive on the right-hand side. But if you were born and raised in the UK, you drive on the left-hand side, right? So when you come here, you're going to have to think about it a little bit more. It doesn't come as natural. Here, you can pull out your phone. You can put on your makeup. You're just not really thinking about it. Drive with your knees and pull in the right-hand side lane. And there's culture in the kingdom of God that God wants to be so part of your life, a part of your DNA, a part of who you are, that it flows out of your life, the conduct of your life without you even thinking about it. And there's one thing that's really missing in our culture today. It's, it's missing in our nation. It's missing in our politics. It's missing in family life and marriages and, and homes. It's, it's missing everywhere. It's the culture of honor. You don't have to look very far to see that it's missing. Because we're being fed a steady diet of disrespect and dishonor every single day. You just got to turn on the news. You see it all over the news. We're bashing one another, dishonoring one another, dishonoring people in government authorities. It's just everywhere. We're being fed this spirit of dishonor. You don't have to look very far. You go on Facebook, you're going to see it there, right? People are blasting one another, tearing one another down. Everybody's sharing their opinion. You know, I, I think opinions are kind of like armpits. 
everybody has two of them and most of them stink. You know, it's like everybody's sharing their opinion on, on Facebook, what they think. I, I've got to, you know, get my opinion out there, share my voice of, of what I think. And there can be some good things to that, but we've got to do it in a way that's honorable and walking in the way in the kingdom. And it just amazes me in our, our political system how much dishonor there is. You know, you look at people running for uh, offices and you find dirt on somebody, then you use it to, to run your campaign ads. We're tearing you down. Even the presidential uh, election debates a couple of years ago, it's like, it was like a junior high recess fight. You know, it's like, what is going on? This is the most powerful position in the world we're running for and we're acting like junior high schoolers. I mean, seriously, where is the honor? Where's the honor in our homes, between husband and wives, and in, in our nation, in our society? It is missing. We're finding it being fed a disrespect and, and honor every single day. We're seeing it everywhere, and our kids are being and raised in this. So we've got to be intentional, be, be people that say, you know what, I'm going to walk in honor. We're going to be honorable people. It's all around us. How many know the... The culture of heaven is honor. It is honor. And I believe as believers, it's our responsibility to make our standard honor. We live from the culture of the kingdom. That is our responsibility to make our standard honor. And it is the culture of heaven. You look at Revelation and 411 and the elders are declaring these four things. They say, glory, honor, blessing, and power be to him. All things are created by you. All things are created for you. Glory, honor, blessing, power. These things they are declaring honor is the place that God dwells and lives. It is the culture of heaven. I believe heaven's wanting to invade our lives where it becomes the culture of of the earth becomes a culture of our family becomes a culture of our nation let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven in our hearts and i believe that's god's desire for it to be the culture of earth as well you look when god delivered the children of israel out of egypt out of slavery and it was the first church the first congregation that came out and and God wanted more. He wanted a relationship with him. He really did. But they kind of rejected him. And they got the Ten Commandments from Moses, the law. And the Ten Commandments, when you really look about it, it's all about honor. All ten of them are about honor. The first four are about honoring God. The last six are about honoring people. Honor God. Keep the Sabbath. Have no other gods before him. Don't use his name in vain. The other six are about people. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. Honor your father and mother. Don't bear false witness. It's all about honor. That's the culture of the kingdom. But for many of us today, we may not have a problem honoring God, but it's honoring Johnny at work, right? Yeah. So we get hung up on Johnny's flaws and, and what he's not. It may not be honoring God, but honoring people around us where we can struggle with sometimes. And the Bible talks about who we're supposed to honor. It says, honor your father and mother that it may go well with you and you'll live a long life. There's a promise attached to that commandment. That, that it'll go well with you and you'll live a long life. We honor our parents not because just they were good to us. Even if they weren't, we honor them because that's the vehicle that God used to get you in this world. If it wasn't for your mom and dad, you would not be here. You wouldn't be able to fill the purposes and plans on your life if it wasn't for your, your mom and dad saying, you know what, we're going to have little Johnny. And you showed up and you're here. God partnered with them and you came to this world. We honor them for who they are. They're, they're our parents. And I found out, you know what, my parents knew more than what I realized then. I'm like, they were right in so many ways. It's like, I got to come back. It's like, dad, you guys, you guys were right. You know, I was wrong. It's like thankful for parents. We honor our mom and dad, this is what it talks about, our mother and father. We honor those in civil authorities. The Bible talks about governing authorities. There's no government authorities or authority that God hasn't set in place that he's not allowed. Whether they're good or evil, he set them in that place or allowed them to be that place. And he uses them to fulfill his purposes, whether they be good or evil. We honor those over us. We honor spiritual authority, the Bible says, and it says even double honor we give. 
We give honor to husbands and wives, the Bible talks about in family life. Husbands honoring one another, wives honoring one another. Husbands, honor your wife because she's a weaker vessel so that your prayers may not be hindered, the Bible talks about. So if we're treating our wives, guys, like she's our old lady or something like that, just like property, heaven may not be listening to you today. She's just your old lady, you know, eh, you know, I'm old lady. it's just my wife, you know. Heaven may not be responding to you right now. It's like, you want to pray? No, I don't think I want to pray. I don't think heaven may be responding to the way that you treat your wife. When he talks about the weaker vessel, he's not talking about you ladies are incapable. You're totally capable. Some of you have had babies. I mean, that's, you're very capable. You're very powerful. But he's talking about the difference of being like Tupperware and fine china. That, that is the difference. Like when God gave my wife Madeline, she is not Tupperware like an everyday dish that you throw around in the sink, but she is fine china, right? You dress her up real nice, make sure she's clean, dress her well, treat her well for the whole world to see this is my lady right here and she's taken. Put her on display. Yeah, she's the queen, glory. Honor in that way. It's like, I need to open my... The car door for my wife more often. It's like I started doing that and I got off. It was like, guys, we need to be more honoring. Open the car doors, doing stuff like that. Because there's gifts in your wife. When you begin to honor her, honor is a principle of access. There's gifts inside of her. When you begin to honor her, there's incredible gifts that you will receive that you didn't even realize it was there. You'll be blessed on another level. When you begin to honor her, it is a principle of access. And ladies, when you honor your man, he, he might be a little smarter than you realize. When you honor him, you'll begin to, to access what's inside of him through heaven. Honor is the principle of access. And I think there's atmospheres that God is, the presence of God's attracted to. Like, I think honor creates an atmosphere and an environment There's certain atmospheres that God stays his hand to, says, you know what, I can't enter in that environment. Like, example, James says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. He's like, I can't enter in that arena of pride. Another example is when the Bible says when brethren dwell together in unity, he says, I command a blessing in that place. Like when brothers and sisters are gathered together, dwelling together in unity, man, my spirit's moving the The power of God's moving in that place. You see the kingdom on display in that place. There's certain atmospheres and environments where the presence of God is attracted and begins to move. And I think honor creates an atmosphere. It creates an environment. And we have dishonor. It shuts down the power of God. It shuts down the anointing. I don't think revival is birthed out of dishonor. I think it shows up every time to shut down revival. And we see this in Mark chapter 6 with Jesus when he comes to his hometown. He's coming to his hometown. In Mark chapter 5, he does these credible, notable miracles. He, he raised a girl from the dead. He cast out a demon out of somebody. He's doing all these miracles. The power of God just flowing through Jesus. But he comes to his hometown. And he begins to teach there. And, and they're astonished. They're amazed. They're like, this is incredible. We've never heard anything like this before Jesus is teaching and all of a sudden somebody stands up and says you know what isn't that Joseph's boy I think he made the chairs and table in our house he's that carpenter isn't he yeah. and maybe somebody else stands up and says yeah I know James and his brothers they're not all that in a bag of chips yeah. Yeah. hey he was on my son's basketball team right I, I know Jesus didn't he get all straight A's in all his exams we know Jesus And they went from being astonished to now the Bible says offended. They went from listening with ears of honor to now familiarity. And it says that he could not do any mighty acts there. It shut down the power of God. It didn't say that he didn't want to. It says he could not do any. He wanted to heal. He wanted to touch people's lives. But 
their will shut down his will because of the environment, the atmosphere of treating Jesus as just common and ordinary. It, it's shut up that principle of access on Jesus to where he could do no miracles there. You won't receive anything supernatural that you treat as common. That's what dishonor is. It's something that we treat as common, as ordinary. If you see the Bible just as a book, you won't receive the life that it brings. If you receive communion as just crackers and grape juice, you won't receive the life that it brings. You won't receive anything supernatural that you treat as common. And they shut down the power of God. I wonder what it would be like if we started honoring one another in our homes, husbands and wives. Maybe the power of God would begin to move. What would happen if we started doing that in America? If we begin to honor and create an atmosphere, an environment of honor, maybe there would be an awakening. Maybe there would be a revival that would begin to take place in this nation when we create an atmosphere of honor around us. But they shut down the power of God in Nazareth where Jesus couldn't do any mighty works there. What is honor? I want to talk about that in a second here. Give us a definition of what honor is. Honor is this. It means a valuing, to highly esteem, to refer as precious. It literally was used as gold or silver, something that is weighty or highly valued. You're adding weight. You're adding value. I'm going to quote a couple of bills right here. Bill Johnson and Bill Vanderbush. Bill Johnson says, this honor is when you recognize a person for who they are without stumbling by who they're not. And he says this, it's a privilege to recognize that everyone has been made in the image of God. Everyone deserves honor because of at least two things. They've been made in, the, in God's image, and he has given them gifts, graces, and abilities so that they can contribute to society. Honor is when you recognize a person for who they are without stumbling by what they're not. I love what Bill Vanderbush says. Since he's coming, I'm like, I'm going to quote him today. So he says, honor is where you live to make somebody else look like a genius. It's where you actually treat somebody as if they were Jesus. He talks about how we're all image bearers. We're all made in the image and likeness of God. And he says, when you release honor, you're actually digging for the treasure that's inside of a person. You're seeing them from heaven's perspective. Honor is calling out the gold in a person. It's coming into agreement with how God sees a person and shifting our perspective to heaven's perspective, beginning to speak honor over their life. I thought both of those are really good. It really summed up what honor is. It's like treating somebody like Jesus, recognizing a person for who they are without stumbling what they're not. I think the issue is, is oftentimes we, we get hung up by what people are not. And that keeps us from releasing a spirit of honor in their lives, like Husbands and wives, we get familiar with our differences and our, and our weaknesses, and it keeps us from releasing a spirit of honor. And if honor is recognizing a person without tripping over by what they're not, that means you don't have to be perfect to be honored. Yeah. You don't have to be perfect to be honored. We all bear the image of God, and we're all made in the likeness and image of God. The image might be marred, but I still have to align my perspective with heaven's perspective, how heaven sees you. And I'll look at what you've been and where you've been, what you've done, but I, I, I claim God's claim on your life. And I begin to look from heaven's perspective and search for the gold that heaven's deposits placed on the inside of you and begin to lock on that and bring it to the surface. The Apostle Paul says we don't look at any man or woman in the kingdom after the flesh, but really after the spirit. Because oftentimes we can get hung up on people, their personalities, the clothes that they wear, how they talk, how they carry themselves. And sometimes God will send you packages in your life that you need that you may not like. Yeah. It's like, I got to see God's claim on them because they have something in them that I need for my life. When I begin to honor them, it begins to release what's inside of them. I can't get hung up in the natural and, and the flaws and, and who they are, and, but really begin to claim God's claim on them. Honor is a principle of access. Honor is not earned, it's freely give. I just want to give us a few things here real quick. Honor is not earned, it's freely given. This is what it says in, in Romans 13. I want to read out of this scripture here. 
Romans 13, 7, it says, Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Honor is earned, it's not earned, it's freely given. And in Romans, the Apostle Paul, he's talking about people in governing authorities and, and how God set them in place. And whether they be good or evil, he uses them for their purposes to be accomplished in this earth. And sometimes God will place somebody over your life that may not have maybe your ability or your uh, understanding or your morals to see what kingdom you're a part of, to test the spirit of honor on your life. Sometimes God will allow people over your life that may not be like you or have the same morals, but so that you'd understand that honor is the way forward in the kingdom. But honor is not earned, it's freely given. The word render means to relinquish. It means to, to give it away. It's like a command. It's not a suggestion. We, we give it away freely. It's like you don't understand what they're like, though. I can't honor them. They're not very nice and they're mean or whatever it may be. But we don't honor based upon their behavior. We honor because we're honorable. We choose to honor because we're living from a different culture, a different kingdom. We honor them because we are honorable people. We freely give it away. Because in our society, we try to earn everything. We try to earn people's love, and we want people to earn forgiveness, and we want to make sure that they're sorry enough, and you show it on your face, and you act pitiful. But in the kingdom of God, we don't earn anything. We freely receive his love, his, his mercy, his grace, his, his honor. Now we freely give it away. We give it away. Honor is not earned, but it's freely given. It says in 2 Peter, to honor all men. He's talking about honoring all people. And that's where he stops. He, he finishes. It's like we honor people. It's not a reward. It's a gift that we give to people. It's a gift that we give them without reservation. Because when you think it like this, that God doesn't honor us because we're good. He honors us because he's good. He doesn't love us because we're good. He loves us because he's good. And he releases favor, honor, and, and grace to us because that's who he is. That's who he is. And he expects us to do the same as his sons and daughters, to honor people around us, to live from that culture because that is the culture of heaven, and that is his heart. So honor isn't based on their character. Whether they deserve it or not, it's based upon our character, whether we have the humility to give it or not. It's our character. We don't honor them because they're honorable. We honor them because we are honorable. We're living from a different kingdom. Honor is not earned, but it's freely given. Honor doesn't mean that I approve or agree with another person, but it's really a recognition of the value of that person. Yeah. Sometimes we think when we honor somebody that we're agreeing with that person automatically. But even though I may not agree with you, I can still honor you and not dishonor you and disrespect you in that way. When Jesus came, he came to bring an upside down kingdom. The revolution of America is a revolution of dishonor, but Jesus came to bring an upside down kingdom. Or if you want to be first, you got to be last. If you want to receive, you got to give. If you want mercy, you got to give mercy. And the way of the kingdom is to show honor. And that means if President Biden comes next week and I see him, I may not agree with his policies or what he's doing with America right now, but I'm still going to honor him because of the value of the person. I may not agree with the policies or how he's taken America, but he's still the president of the United States. And I still recognize the value of that he is as a person, treating him like Jesus. Maybe if we did that in America, maybe people would start getting saved. Yeah. I don't know if he's saved or not, but maybe he would get saved because it releases an atmosphere, yeah. an environment. You know, we pray, Jesus, help us to act like you. I think it's a good prayer, but I think we need to pray, Jesus, help us to react like you. Yeah. That's where we get ourselves in trouble if we're being honest, right? Yeah. Help us to react like you would. 
Because when you act, you're initiating something. But when you're reacting, something's already been initiated and moving towards you. Help us to react the way that you would react in our culture today. That we wouldn't be moved by feelings or emotions and get off the rails. But we react like you, Jesus. Honor doesn't mean agreeing or approval. But it's a recognition of the value of that person. I'm going to say this. Honor comes through thoughts words, deeds, but it originates in the heart. It originates in the heart. Your words communicate honor. They express honor. Jesus, when he spoke to people, he didn't maybe belittle them or talk down on them. He didn't even talk down on prostitutes or, or tax collectors because words express honor. I was listening to this video of uh, Bill Johnson, and I think it's on Foundations of Honor, Bill Johnson and Danny Silk and Chris Valentin. I, I think it's how you say his last name. But Chris was at his house, at Bill's house, and he was kind of talking about these people, how they didn't like him or just, just issues with them or whatever it may be. And just Bill just kind of looked at him. He wouldn't engage in the conversation because he's like, I'm not going to enter into that critical spirit, that fault-finding spirit that and talk people less of how Jesus sees them and his claims on them. I thought that was so amazing. It's like, God, let that be my heart, that I wouldn't speak less of anybody of how you speak about them. The Bible talks about Ephesians, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but what is good for edification that may impart grace to the hearers. It's like, don't let, let the words out of my mouth, let it, be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight, oh God. It's like, let only the words that come in my mouth be building up and building courage. And sometimes we get ourselves in trouble with our words. We're creating an atmosphere with our words and our words release honor. And I want my words that I say to you and about you to, to release honor what God says about you. Not only does honor come through words, but it comes through our thoughts. There's a story in Luke Chapter 5, where, where Jesus is teaching in the synagogue. And there's about 200 people there. There's these religious leaders from every major city. And, and it says the power of the Lord is present to heal them. And in the story, there's this paralytic who comes along. And there's four friends, four crazy friends. You need four crazy friends in your life. Everybody does. They bring him to Jesus, but they couldn't get inside, so they begin to tear off the roof to, to drop him in. You know, I've always wondered what, in the Bible, what happened to the guy whose house was that? What did he say after they ripped off his roof? You know, it's like they never talk about that. Or like the, the pigs that Jesus cast the demons into and they ran off and died. It's like, hey, those were my pigs, you know? It's like, you don't hear about that in the Bible. Just, just one of my random thoughts. But they're dropping this guy in there, and the power of the Lord was present to heal. And I'm sure there's other people in there that needed healing, but it said Jesus perceived their thoughts and what they were saying. And it was only the paralytic that got healed in that story because their thoughts was releasing an atmosphere of dishonor. It's like, I, I perceive your thoughts. I know what you're thinking. And the only person that walked away healed was that paralytic. It's like our thoughts create an atmosphere. Our words create an atmosphere, but it all originates in the heart. It's what Jesus said. You honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. You worship me, but it's empty worship service, he talks about. You honor me with my lips, but your heart is far from me. It originates in the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's like if you get around me long enough, you're going to find out what's in my heart. It's going to come out of my thoughts, come out of my words, come out of my deeds. It originates in the heart. That's why the Bible says to guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. It's like, God, I want to guard my heart. I want my heart to be a heart of honor. I want it to be your heart. It originates in the heart. Like, God, transform my heart so I don't get hung up on what people are not. But I can recognize them for who they are and see them how you see them. See them from heaven's perspective and see the gold on them, begin to treat them like Jesus would. 
It's like change my heart. It all begins in the heart. If you want to change your words, you got to change your heart. If you want to change your thoughts, you got to change your heart. If you want to change your actions, you got to change your heart. It all originates in the heart. That is the source. It's like, God, change my heart. Let my heart be like yours. Let it be a heart of honor to the world around me. It talks about the Bible does says honor has a reward. In Matthew, it says, if you receive a prophet as a prophet, you'll receive a prophet's reward. If you receive a righteous man as a righteous man, you'll receive a righteous man's reward. And if you give a cup to one of these little ones, it will not go unrewarded. Honor has a reward. And the reward is is when you honor people that God sends in your life, maybe over you, we honor up, we honor down, and we honor all around. We honor people in authority. We honor our peers. We honor people that God's entrusted to us. We honor up, down, and all around. And when you begin to honor them and add weight to them for what they are and add more to it, there is a reward that comes with it. Honor is a principle of access. There's a widow woman in the Old Testament. All she has to eat is a biscuit. And she's in a famine. And Elijah comes to her front door and I'm sure if we pictured this today, it'd be probably a different story for us. But he says, if you give me your last meal, you're going to survive this famine and be blessed. Most of us probably have been like, you know what? You just need to run off because you're just crazy. But she honored him as a prophet because however you perceive somebody is how you're going to receive. She honored him, gave him the food, and then her food never ran out and her oil never ran out because she honored him as a prophet because how you perceive people is how you receive from them. This happened to Jesus with a woman at the well. She says, I perceive you to be a prophet. She's like, okay, I'll prophesy. You have five husbands. The one you're with right now is not your husband. How many know she probably would wish she would have perceived him as a teacher or something like that. (laughs) Nicodemus is like, Jesus, I perceive you to be a, a teacher. He's like, okay, I'll teach you about the kingdom, how to enter into the kingdom. Because how you perceive people is how you receive them. We honor up, we honor down. We, I think we have more of a harder problem honoring people that we're familiar with, maybe our peers, because we're familiar with who they are. But if I do something for you, God will do it for me. When I honor you, there's a righteous man's reward. There's a reward when we honor people that can't do anything for us, they can't pay us back. People that can't open a door for you, You do it for them. There was a reward that comes with that when we honor people. Honor has a reward. I wonder what it would look like if we really begin to be people that live from the kingdom, the culture of the kingdom, which is honor, and create an atmosphere, an environment of honor. What would happen in our homes? What would happen in our nation? What would happen in our schools? So often I think dishonor shuts down the, the power of God. And I want the power of God to flow in my life. There's things in you that I need, vice versa. There's things that people send in our lives that we need. It's a principle of access. And I want to add weight, add value to people, treat people like Jesus, like Bill Vanderbush said. Recognizing for who they are without stumbling by what they're not. Truly living from a place of honor. I want to pray that God would change our hearts. What would it look like? I want to pray for us this morning. Father, we just thank you right now that you've honored us, not because we're good, but because you're good. You've given us honor. You made us royalty. You made us kings and priests. We didn't deserve that. But it's out of your goodness. So I thank you right now. We, some of us, we need to repent of dishonor. Maybe we dishonored our spouses. We've dishonored maybe authority. It's wherever it may be right now. Lord, check our hearts, Lord. I, I repent of dishonor in my life. Well, because we want to create an atmosphere and an environment where your presence is attracted, where you, your power flows and begins to, to move. I thank you that once again, we're going to honor 
in our home. We're going to honor our spouses. We're going to add weight, add value. Recognize for who they are, who you've created them to be. See the gold in each and every person. Honor the people around us. And I thank you for your power that's being released. The blessing that's being released when we recognize people for who they are and your claim on them. So right now, we just say, Jesus, work in our hearts. Let our words be words of honor. Let, let our thoughts be thoughts of honor. Change our hearts. Work in our hearts. Transform our hearts today. Because we're being fed a steady diet of dishonor and disrespect every single day. Lord, we don't want don't to have that attitude, but we want to have an attitude of honor and release the spirit of honor everywhere we go. So we're going to choose to honor all people without reservation. Not because they're honorable or based upon their behavior, but because we're honorable. Because that's what you've given us and we freely give it. So I thank you today for homes being homes of a culture of honor, just like heaven. Our schools, I thank you. I thank you for an awakening in our nation. We begin to honor one again, once again. I just thank you today for working in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you today. Thank you, Jesus. If there's anybody here that says, you know, and I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior today, I just want to pray for you this morning before we close. Amen. Well, Father, I just bless your people today. I just thank you today for calling us, for choosing us, and making us your sons and daughters. So I just think as we leave this place today, Lord, I think of our people experiencing your love through us, your goodness through us, as we choose to honor. I thank you for people encountering you through us this week. And Father, we just say thank you today for placing us in this great nation day of America. We thank you for an awakening in America today that you're not done with America, but there's greater things ahead. So we thank you today for every blessing you've given us. And we just honor you, Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. Amen.